back back up a bit. It's like a little obnoxious. Okay. <laughs> And go. Good morning and welcome to our Savior Lutheran Church. Our online community, we're so glad you're with us this morning. Uh, we have a great morning plan. We got to baptize Sabrina Wolf, and uh, she's um, just declaring her faith in Christ and uh, how she wants to start anew. And we're just excited about it. Uh, her sins are forgiven in the waters of her baptism. She's adopted into God's family. She's a member of His church. She is a new creation. All those things are in the sermon today. Interesting sermon. It's in Mark chapter 3, verses 20 through 35. Uh, Jesus there is attracting crowds. He's doing exorcisms and healings. And guess what? His family thinks he's nuts. They think he's mad. And they go to take charge of him. And ultimately it winds up with Jesus says, Who is my mother and my brothers? And it's those who do God's will. So I really enjoyed the sermon. It talks about the unpardonable sin. If you are OCD or suffer from obsessive compulsive disorder, you might be worried about committing the unpardonable sin. But let me just say this. If you're worried about it, you haven't committed it. And it's not just a cursory, just a little uh, blip where you say something you shouldn't have said. The, the scribes were hardened against Jesus, attributing his works right then and there to Satan. So, you know, we can't do that today. However, anybody who doesn't believe Jesus is Christ, the Son of the living God, and that, is, that he uh, was, you know, uh, the Savior of the world and, and their own Savior, um, really can't be saved. Sins are paid for, but we still have to accept the pardon and the God gives us in Christ. So we have to accept the Christ. So anyhow, uh, looking forward to the service. And hope you have a great day. If you want to contribute, go to our website, OSOCRoy.com. Uh, There's a button there you can push to contribute to this ministry. We thank you for being with us and have a blessed day.
God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Here, guys, we extend a warm welcome to you this morning. We're so glad you've chosen to worship with us. We pray and trust that you do that and you draw us closer to us as a community of faith, closer to us as a church family. We're so glad you're here this morning. We have a wonderful morning plan. Sabrina Wolf's going to be baptized here in a little bit. And I'm so excited about that. I'm just, uh, I can't tell you what it does to my heart and to my faith when uh, individuals get baptized. Not just babies, but adults. And Sabrina's making a real statement today, so we're so glad for that as well. Let's all stand for our call to worship. Glory to God. say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us take a brief moment and ask the Holy Spirit to show us where we fall short of God's standard of holiness. Confess those sins and receive the forgiveness that we have in the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Most merciful God, we confess that we are bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us. Renew us and lead us so that we may lie in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, whose mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake, forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
you seated, Sabrina, if you bring, come on up and bring your family with you. Sponsor, and we're so glad to see Daryl back. Uh, yeah. I talked to Daryl a couple times during the COVID, and uh, they were taking so many precautions where he worked, he could not afford to lose any time at work, and but he wanted to be here, and so we're so glad, Daryl, you came today for the baptism of your daughter. So, so yeah, good man. I did my I know, Jordan. Daryl, in Christian love, you presented Sabrina and Wolf for holy baptism. You should therefore carefully, uh, faithfully care for her and help her in every way as God gives you opportunity. That she may bear witness to the faith we profess and that living in the covenant of her baptism and in communion with the church, she may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. Do you promise to fulfill these obligations? I do. Let us pray. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks from the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and you created heaven and earth. By the gift of water you nourish and sustain us in all things. By the waters of the flood you condemn the wicked and save those who you have chosen Noah and his family. You led Israel by the pillar of cloud and fire through the sea out of slavery and into the freedom of the promised land. In the water of the Jordan your son was baptized by John and anointed with the spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, your beloved son has set us free from the bondage to sin and death and has opened the way to the joy and freedom of everlasting life. He made water a sign of the kingdom and of cleansing and rebirth. In obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit that those who are here baptized may be given new life. Wash away the sin of all those who are cleansed by this water and bring them forth as inheritors of the glorious kingdom. To you be given praise and honor and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Sabrina, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? Let's all stand. Not just Sabrina, but congregation as well. Family. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ.
for bringing your sons and daughters from the power of sin and for raising them up to new life through his holy sacrament. Pour your Holy Spirit upon Sabrina Ann Wolf, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Amen. So shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. O God, the giver of life, look with kindness upon Sabrina. Let her ever rejoice in the gift you have given her. Make her a teacher and example of righteousness. Strengthen her in her own baptism so she may share eternally the salvation you've given her through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through baptism, God has made Sabrina a member of the priesthood we all share in Christ Jesus, that we may proclaim the praise of God and bear his creative and redeeming word to all the world. Sabrina, we welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, children of the same Heavenly Father, and, and work with us in the kingdom of God. Let's turn around. Let's give it up. Let's give it up. morning it is about family for sure it's from mark chapter 3 verses 20 through 35 here to where the lord then jesus entered a house and again a crowd gathered so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat when his family heard about this they went to take charge of him but they said he's out of his mind and the teachers of the law who came down from jerusalem said He's possessed by Beelzebub, by the prince of demons. He is driving out demons. So Jesus called them over to him and began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end is come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. They can climb into the strong man's house. Truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They're guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying he has an impure spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers, he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever God does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Here ends the gospel.
recently our family has started watching reruns of the show Monk. We enjoy it tremendously as we sing the theme song together, It's a Jungle Out There by Randy Newman. <coughs> It's become a fun close of the evening a bonding time for us. You may watch it a time or two. It ran for nine years on the USA Network. He's a private detective who suffers from obsessive compulsive disorder. If you've known or know anyone with OCD in an extreme form like Monk has, they tend to be a bit, a bit eccentric. Usually their OCD is manifested by an excessive need for cleanliness, symmetry, and they also have unwanted or ego alien thoughts. I believe hoarding has been also added as a symptom, but Monk suffered from the first three. In a recent episode we watched, Monk was hired as an informant in a finance company. He was to let the owner know if he observed any shady behaviors. But Monk came to really like the other employees and felt like he belonged when he never feels like he belongs. So, but now he felt as though he was part of the office gang. He kept saying, I have a gang. I'm part of the office gang. He went out to eat with them and even bowled with them. But his acceptance by the office gang was short-lived. In the office bowling championship game, he was disqualified for not wearing bowling shoes. One of his teammates offered him his shoes, but Monk could never, ever wear someone else's shoes. Too many foot germs. When his teammate lost the championship match due to Monk's inability to overcome his OCD, they rejected him totally. We're all looking for acceptance, but often we experience nothing but rejection like Monk. Some of us even have felt extreme rejection from our families of origin. I saw some kids on the adolescent psychiatric unit I directed who were called derogatory names by their family like Fatso, Stupid, Dimwit, Slowpoke, and you wonder why they were admitted to a psychiatric unit. Our families are supposed to be the one place where we feel accepted and loved, where we feel safe to be who we are, but that often isn't the case. Families can be exceedingly difficult when we don't live up to our parents' expectations or turn out like they expected us to be. If this describes your experience, rest easy. Get after the Jesus as well. How do I know that? Well, look at our gospel passage this morning. There in verses 20 and 21, we read, Then Jesus entered a house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him. For they said, he's out of his mind. It is interesting that his family thought he was out of his mind. They had been with Jesus for the better part of 30 years. They knew who he was. They knew he wasn't given the magic tricks or chicanery. Mary knew he was the savior. Remember in Luke 1, Mary told Elizabeth, and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my savior. She knew she needed a savior, and she rejoiced that God had provided one in her soon-to-be-born son, Jesus Christ. So I assume his brothers and sisters knew Jesus was God's son, the savior of the world as well. Yet even after being with him for 30 years, here they're thinking he's out of his mind. They must have had a family meeting and decided they needed to intervene. Mary and his brothers must have been concerned because large crowds were following him. They probably heard that his teachings, healings, and exorcism were bringing in the crowds. So they came to take charge of him. He was upsetting the religious authorities in Israel, and they had to do something to shut him down. The word translated to take charge of him is a word used for taking someone by the hand or for arresting them. But why would Mary want to take him home? Mary had to see that Jesus' ministry was in direct conflict with the religious leaders of the day. Joseph, Jesus' stepfather, is not mentioned in this passage, so the assumption is that he had already passed. After all, within 30 years since Jesus was born. Consequently, Mary probably had high respect for the religious leaders, and now her son's ministry and life were in direct conflict with the religious powers that be. More than likely, she did not expect Jesus to wind up in direct conflict with the religious leaders, so she and his brothers had to get him out of there. Less nobly, they may have been protecting the family name. In any event, his life was turning out to be what Mary and his half-brothers and sisters was not turning out 
Whereas Mary and his half brothers and sisters thought it would be for sure. Now think about his mother and brothers and sisters rejecting him. They thought he was mad. They thought he needed deep therapy, probably hypnosis, for thinking he had all the power and or needed all this attention. We know families can be brutal. His family rejected him, so if your family of origin has rejected you, don't worry. Jesus understands. In fact, Isaiah 53, 3, we read that Messiah, Jesus, was despised and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering and familiar with pain like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised. And we held him in low esteem. You may have been held in low esteem by your family and others as well. They might have rejected you as a child for who knows what. You might have been scapegoated by your family. They might have placed all their negative actions and attitudes on you and then sent you out in the wilderness just as the children of Israel did on the scapegoat every year on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And they might still reject you as an adult. Remember, Jesus was 30 years old when this went down. He understands and knows what that feels like. It was probably even more difficult for Jesus, more than likely he was the family hero growing up. But now his mom and brothers said he needed therapy or at least protection from himself. However, his family couldn't stop him because he was on a mission to free all of us from the penalty of sin, the power of sin, and ultimately the presence of sin. Because one day there will be no more tears, no more pain, no more suffering, and no more death. And aren't we glad he did? Mark, in true attention deficit disorder style, interrupts the account of his Jesus' mothers and brothers heading out to take him by the hand and lead him back to sanity. Mark moves to the teachers of the law, or the scribes, as some translations read, uh, who came down from Jerusalem. How Jesus responds to them and what they're saying has caused sensitive believers much anxiety. The scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebub. According to Pastor David Jeremiah, the verb elegon, translated as said, is in the imperfect tense. Now what that means is continuous action in the past. In other words, they kept on saying he is possessed by Beelzebub, by the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. So it just wasn't the matter of a thoughtless word or instant reaction. Their words represented a hardened attitude and impenitent heart. Pastor Jeremiah contends these scribes had copied Isaiah 53 about the suffering servant of Messiah many times, as well as Psalm, Psalm 22 about the Messiah's death and Micah 5 about the Messiah's birth. These were not some careless, uh, this was not some careless word that sensitive, obsessive, impulsive, disordered Christians might say in a fit of anger or shock or disbelief. As Pastor Jeremiah says, their words represented a hardened attitude and impenitent heart. Jesus says something here that is very disconcerting. He says in verses 28 and 29, Truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They're guilty of an eternal sin. Now, didn't we think that there was no sin that can't be forgiven. You're right about that. Even blasphemy can be forgiven. Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 1.13 that he was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man. But he was shown mercy because he acted in ignorance and unbelief. Paul spoke against God and his church. Remember, he held Stephen's cloak as they stoned Stephen to death. He persecuted the church. He said awful things about God. The God of the Christians. But he was forgiven for his blasphemy, saying that he was shown mercy because he acted in ignorance and unbelief. The scribes, though, were hardened. They were not ignorant. They were educated and informed religious leaders who thought they had a corner on the truth. Methodist preacher Donald English in his commentary, The Message of Mark, 
explains how blasphemy against the Holy Spirit cannot be forgiven. There he says about the unbelief of the scribes, least of all have the religious leaders unthinkingly, ignorantly, or unknowingly used hapless words constituting blasphemy or bad language. Their sin is that in the presence of God's grace in action, they have not only rejected it, but ascribed it to the devil. This is their fixed position. No wonder they will not find forgiveness. The sin against the Holy Spirit is portrayed as resolute attribution of God's gracious work to Satan. There is no forgiveness here because such an attitude is incapable of seeking. Can we commit this sin today? That's the question. And very sensitive Christians really worry about this because they might say in a fit of anger something against God and they fear that they've committed the unpardonable sin. Technically, no, we cannot commit this sin today. Mark gives us this explanation in verses 28 through 30. That blasphemies can be forgiven, but not blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Then he explains in verse 30 that blasphemy against the Holy Spirit was saying Jesus had an unclean, impure spirit then and there on that scene. That can't be said of Jesus now because he's not here performing those miracles. Consequently, no one can attribute his miracles to Satan. However, as the Lutheran study Bible says in its notes, those who refuse to recognize Jesus as God's son and acknowledge his works as manifestation of the Holy Spirit remain under the dominion of Satan. True believers who have been baptized have not only Christ but also have the Holy Spirit. They've been adopted into God's family, as Sabrina was this morning. Remember, these scribes were not believers. They were Jews who thought they went to heaven because they were children of Abraham and kept the law. Remember that Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, the natural man, the man without the spirit, the unbeliever, cannot understand the things of the spirit because they are spiritually discerned. So if you're plagued by intrusive thoughts that you've committed the unpardonable sin and you've worried and you're worried about that, you haven't committed the unpardonable sin because those who did were hardened. You are not because it bothers you. As Luther told us, remember your baptism. Remember it's a fact that when you were baptized, faith was created in you by the word of God. You became a child of God, a new creation. You were adopted into God's family. You were given the Holy Spirit. And you are now to walk in newness of life by the power of the Holy Spirit. As this section of Scripture closes, Jesus' family shows up to take him by the hand and lead him out of there. The crowd was sitting around him and told him his mother and brothers were outside seeking him. But Jesus answers them, who are my mother and my brothers? Then he looked at those seated in the circle around him. Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Jesus was all about doing his Father's will, are we? Remember in the garden he prayed that his Father would take a cup of supper and come in three times. But eventually he says, not my will, but yours be done. Over the last two years, there were many times and I imposed on my wife and kiddos to do things for me because it was too painful to go up and down the stairs of our house, of which there are many. Most of the time, everybody did what I asked with a great attitude, and this only endeared them to me more than I can explain. I want to thank Minuet, Lexi Clare, Gracie Bell, Maggie Bruce for their patience, grace, mercy, and helpfulness during that time. When I was the easiest. <clears throat> I'm sure God our Father, just like I was pleased, is pleased when we do his will as well. But what is God's will for us? If he can sum it up for us with the two great commandments, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. As the Luton Study Bible tells us again in its notes, here Jesus is saying, Loyalty to God takes precedence over loyalty to blood relations. At a former church I served, it was a very nice family. I really liked them. 
They were salt of the earth kind of folks, good folks, and they were good to me. But they rarely <coughs> worshiped with us. Every weekend, they went out to their cabin in East Texas with family. Spending time with their earthly family took precedence over time with their church family. Trust me, I never really understood how important family was until Minyu had taught me through doing things together like watching Monk, playing board games, taking little day trips, to being certain that we sit down at the table as often as we can as a family. I never experienced any of that growing up, except on holidays. So it's been a real education and a wonderful, wonderful experience. But there was another man at my church in Texas. I got to tell you about him. I hope I don't lose it. Pope McConnell. He would always tell people he was almost a Yankee because he was born in Honey Grove, Texas, 13 miles south of the Red River. He was part of our men's ministry, and we always took up an offering for the homeless. We were right by a light rail station, Dallas Light Rail, so the homeless would ride the rail, see our church, and come see if we had anything to help them. Oh, I had my regulars. One Saturday, Homer, the time we took the offering, gave us a check for $1,000 to use however we needed to for the homeless. Because he took seriously God's command to love our neighbors as ourselves. I was there in the waiting room with his wife when the surgeon came out and told her he didn't make it. I was blessed to officiate his funeral that was jam-packed. One thing Homer always told our men's ministry was that there were three priorities in life. In this order, there were faith, family, and friends. You see, Homer was one of Jesus' brothers because he was all about doing the Lord's will. <coughs> Being trimming bushes at the church in 100 degree weather, <coughs> changing out light bulbs in the exit signs, preparing communion trays, giving a cool thousand for the homeless. I realized last night I was there at his death. I did his funeral, but I never grieved. So I'm sorry if I share that with you now. A simple man from Honey Grove, Texas, where Davy Crockett stopped with his men on the way to the Alamo to eat the honey there. Homer had a profound impact on my life. But he would tell you he was a sinner as well. So as believers, let's admit, we don't always do God's will, but we want to. Remember, we're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, and we walk by faith as well. Let's come to the table this morning, celebrating the forgiveness of our sins that Jesus paid for on Calvary. Thanking him that we are accepted for eternity in God's family, and that nothing Neither height nor depth, neither angel nor demon, neither things present nor things to come, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Let's ask God to help us to do his will by the power of the Holy Spirit so that when we see him, he not only calls us brother or sister, but also says to us, as I believe he said to Homer, well done my good and faithful servant. And all God's people say.
us proclaim the mystery of faith. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift up our hearts. We lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our right to give God thanks and praise. It is in the right side, that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to his holy name. And with the saints on earth and the host in heaven, joy.
body of Christ given for you and me. <clears throat> the blood of Christ shed for the remission of our sins. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. We bless you. <coughs> we want to make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord will let his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Serve the Lord, Christ is your God. Thanks be to God.
love the stars and colors. I love Alex, I love Risha, I love everyone. I love Kat, I love, I love everyone, okay? I love everyone. Uh, you are just my little sunshines is what I'm calling you now because if I said lovelies, I would be stealing that from Dua Lipa. Um, <laughs> Thank you all guys for being at the church, being everywhere, just watching my live videos, and I hope to see you all the time, just like, oh, all the time, like, every day, like, not every day, okay, I don't know what I'm doing, I just, I'm kind of batting to my sentences, anyways, so, um, we love you guys, we all love you guys, you're just an absolute blessing, we love you. So. Mom, do you want to say bye? Mm -hmm. Do you want to say bye? Sign off. I just signed off, but do you want to say bye? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Three, two, one. Bye. 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 <laughs>